So this video contains five exercises for you to let you practice algebra. So there are five equations and each of these equations the idea is that you should solve it to find out which value or values of x solve the, these equations. On the next slide you can find the answers and then on the following slides you can find detailed solutions. But to get the greatest benefit from this, what I think you should do is write these qu questions down on paper and then try to do them without looking at the answers, without looking at the solutions. So I'd suggest that you pause the video, try to do the questions, and then come back and see if you got the answers. So with that, I suggest you pause the video. Welcome back. On the next slide, let's look at the answers. So here are the answers to the various questions. And I should say perhaps that the exercises have all been taken from a book called Algebra by George Crystal, which was written in 1904. And it's in two volumes. These are all from volume one. And the questions and the answers but not the solutions are available online. So here we have the answers. So for the first question it's this, for the second it's this, the third is solved by x is naught, the fourth is solved this way and the fifth is solved by x is minus a half. And if you'd like to check any of these or see how I tried to do it then what you can do is carry on and see the solutions. So here is our first equation. We have a over b plus x plus b over a plus x is equal to 1. And from the form of this equation, we see immediately that b plus x and a plus x cannot be 0 because we're not allowed to divide by 0. So since they're not vanishing, I think the simplest thing to do is to multiply both sides of this equation by b plus x and also by a plus x. You could, if you wish, put these two terms on a common denominator, which would be b plus x times a plus x, and then multiply by that denominator on both sides, and that's essentially the same thing. So let's multiply both sides by b plus x and a plus x at a plus x and b plus x, just to put it in alphabetical order. And what we're therefore going to obtain is this term, we're going to have a times a plus x times b plus x, and the b plus x factor will cancel with this term in the denominator. So what we're going to get is a times a plus x from the first term. And then we're going to get plus b in the numerator times, and now the a plus x factor will cancel, and we will be left with a factor of b plus x. And on the other side, we're going to have 1 times a plus x times b plus x. I'm not going to bother writing the 1 outside. So now all we have to do is expand both sides and on this side we're going to get a squared plus ax plus b squared plus bx. So let me write that out. a squared plus ax plus b squared plus bx is equal to, and on the other side we're going to have a times b, and then we're going to get the cross terms, so it's going to be a times x plus b times x plus x squared. And now when we look at this we see that there are some cancellations, so in particular on both sides we have an ax, so they will cancel, and on both sides we have a bx, so they will cancel. So the only surviving x term is this x squared. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now swap both sides of the equation around because here we have an x squared. So I'm going to write ab plus x squared is equal to, and now we have this side here, and that is a squared plus b squared. So now we subtract ab from both sides, and that tells us that x squared is a squared minus ab plus b squared. And what I've done in this side is I've tried to order the terms in such a way that I can see there is some sort of logic to it. So I've chosen to write the highest power of a first, then the next power of a, and then the lowest power of a, a to the zero here. So what we've succeeded in doing is on this side we have all the terms with x's, just the one term, and on this side there are no terms with x's, so we're very, very close to solving the equation. Here we just have to take the square root, so we get that x is equal to, and then it's going to be the square root of a squared minus ab plus b squared. But of course we need to say plus or minus, because if we square this to get back, to the line above. Here we'll get x squared when we square it, and here we will get a squared minus ab plus b squared, but it doesn't matter whether we have a plus sign or a minus sign here. In both cases, when you square it, you get this again. So this is the correct answer. And what we did, just again, this was our equation. We've multiplied both sides by the denominator terms here, and then we expanded the algebra, cancelled certain terms, and then we put the terms with x's on one side and constants on the other. We tried to use a logical order for writing them, and then we just took the square root here. So with that, we can go on to the second question. So for the second question, we again are dividing by 1 minus bx and 1 minus ax, and they cannot be 0. So we can safely multiply both sides of this equation by 1 minus bx and by 1 minus ax. And so that's going to give us a times 1 minus ax, and then when we multiply by 1 minus bx, it will cancel this term on the bottom. So we're just left with this. And then we have minus b times, and in a very similar way, it is 1 minus bx because the 1 minus ax term that we multiply by cancels with that. And this is equal to 0. And again, this is where we multiplied by or both sides. by 1 minus ax times 1 minus bx. So, what does this give us? Well, let's expand. And what we see is that we have a minus a squared x minus b plus b squared x is equal to 0. And now, what we do is we're going to keep all the terms that have an x dependence on this side and all the constant terms we're going to take over to the other side. So we have b squared minus a squared all multiplied by x. So I factorized out the x here is equal to, and now on the other side, I take the b over to here and it becomes positive. I take the a over to here, it's minus a. So I have b minus a. So again, what we've done here is these terms, I've just realized they're both multiplied by x, so I can take it out and I have b squared minus a squared all multiplied by x. And then I've added a b to both sides to cancel this. So I have a b on this side and I've subtracted an a 
from both sides to cancel this and therefore I have a minus a there. So therefore we have that x is equal to b minus a over b squared minus a squared. And now to simplify this result what we do is we recognize that this is of a form that we can use a very very common identity that we use repeatedly in these exercises. So we, we note that b squared minus a squared, the difference of two squares, can be written as b plus a times b minus a. And that is utterly key for several of the questions in this video. So the difference of two squares can be written as the sum of the quantities multiplied by the difference of the quantities. And this tells us, therefore, that x is equal to b minus a divided by b plus a times b minus a. So the whole of the bottom is multiplied by b minus a, and the whole of the top is 1 times b minus a, so they are going to cancel, and I'll be left with a factor of 1. So therefore, x is equal to 1 divided by, and on the bottom in the denominator, we just have this b plus a factor, so it's 1 divided by b plus a. And that is the answer to the exercise. So again, all we've done is multiplied by the denominators, which is safe to do because they cannot be equal to 0. And then we've just expanded and put together here the terms that depend on x, and here the constants, divided through by this coefficient, and then recognize this very important, widely used identity. And that allowed us to simplify our answer. So with that, we'll move on to the third exercise. So I can imagine when people first look at the third exercise, unless you immediately see what to do, it might look a bit scary. But then I hope you identified the identity that we just had in the previous exercise. We can write x squared minus a squared. So we recognize it, we'll just write it out. We recognize that x squared minus a squared is a difference of two squares, so we can write it as x plus a times x minus a. And it's the same here and here. We just replace the a's by b's or by c's. So x squared minus a squared divided by x minus a is going to be I'll put the x minus a here, x minus a. And you can see that that factor, which is multiplying all the top, cancels with that, leaving us just on the bottom with a 1. So we have x plus a over 1, which is equal to x plus a. So therefore, we can rewrite our equation as x plus a plus x plus b plus x plus c is equal to a plus b plus c minus 3x. And if we just tidy that a little bit, on this side we have x plus x plus x. So we have 3x plus a plus b plus c is equal to a plus b plus c minus 3x. So the a plus b plus c is common on both sides. If we subtract it from one, we subtract it from the other. And we have 3x is equal to minus 3x. And that's equivalent to 6x is equal to 0. Or to view it in a different way, if you say 3x is equal to minus 3x, 
the only solution is that x is naught, and it's the same thing is clear here. So we need the solution x is equal to zero. So again, to solve this problem, we recognized this important factorization that x squared minus a squared is x plus a times x minus a. And after that, it follows quite straightforwardly. So with that, we can move on to the fourth question. So when we turn to this question here, what we can notice is that we have here again a difference of two squares. And we recognize that 4b squared minus x squared is equal to 2b plus x times 2b minus x. So the 2b times the 2b is 4b squared, x times minus x is minus x squared, and the cross terms cancel because of the different minus signs here and here. So this is very good news because it means if we multiply through by this factor on the right hand side it will cancel this denominator and on the left hand side for each of the terms the denominator will be cancelled here by this here by this and we will just be left with a little bit of algebra to solve so what we're going to do is we multiply through by 4b squared minus x squared but on the left hand side we're thinking of it in this form here so what do we get? Well, the first term is going to be x plus 2a, and that's all going to be multiplied by this, but in the denominator we have a 2b minus x that will cancel that, so we're left with 2b plus x. And in a similar way from the other term we have plus x minus 2a, all multiplied by, and the term that survives is 2b minus x. And on the other side, it's 4ab, and all of this cancels with all of that, so that's what we're left with. So now we just need to expand. So I'm going to just multiply out x by this, and we're going to get 2bx plus x squared. And then we have plus 2a times these terms. So 2a times 2b is 4ab. And then it's plus 2ax. And then the second term we're going to get in a similar way. 2bx minus x squared minus 4ab plus, because it's minus, minus, 2ax, and that's equal to 4ab. So let's pause, take stock of where we are, and we see that we have an x squared here and a minus x squared here. That's excellent. They're going to cancel. And we have got a 2bx and a 2bx. They will add. 2ax and 2ax they will add as well and we've got a 4ab and a minus 4ab and they're going to cancel so let's cancel those um, notice by the way I'm using differently angled strokes for these cancellations and that's something I often do so if I think I've made a mistake and I'm going backwards I can look to see more easily which terms I thought cancelled each other. Okay so what do we have? Let's put down the terms involving x first so we've got 2ax 2ax that's 4ax plus 4bx and that's equal to 
a B and let me just check I've used this term this term this term and that term so that's all four terms and on the other side we had that so therefore what we have is common factor of four I can get rid of that there there and there and then we have a plus b times x is equal to a b so therefore x is equal to a b divided by a plus b and that's our answer so again this really important identity is something we recognized and we were able to use to solve this equation. With that, I'll move on to the next exercise. So the final question that we want to solve is a little bit different. And we look at this and we see that the denominators are not the same and the numerators are not the same. But hang on, this is x squared plus 6x. And if I was to expand that, I'd get x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this is x squared plus 6x plus 10. So what I can do is I can complete the square and get something very similar to this. And the same thing is true in the numerator. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using completing the square. And In particular, what we're going to get in the numerator is we've got x minus 2 all squared. So this is our first term here. And if I expand that, I get x squared. I get the cross terms. There are two of them. So I'm going to get minus 4x. And I will get plus 4 when I square that. So I need to have plus 1. And in the denominator... I'm going to have x plus 3 squared plus 1 again. So if I expand this, I get x squared. The cross terms, there are two of them, so I'm going to get plus 6x plus 9 plus 1 is indeed plus 10. Minus x minus 2 squared all divided by x plus 3 squared is equal to 0. So once we've recognized this, this makes solving the problem much, much easier. If we don't recognize it and we just multiply everything by these two denominators, we're going to get a lot of terms when we expand. And although a lot of terms are going to cancel, we're much more likely to make a mistake Having used completing the square, this is going to be much easier to solve. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides, but here it's zero, um, so that won't do anything. We're going to multiply both sides by x plus 3 squared plus 1 and by x plus 3 squared. This term cannot be zero. The smallest it can be is 1. And here we're not allowed to have x plus 3 is 0 because we've written this term here at the beginning and we should not be dividing by 0. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this and by this. So we're going to get from the first term, when we multiply by this it will just cancel, and then when we multiply by this we'll get the numerator times that denominator. So we're going to get open brackets, open brackets, x minus 2 squared plus 1, close brackets, that's the numerator, times x plus 3 squared, minus x minus 2 squared, open brackets, open brackets, x plus 3 squared plus 1, close the big brackets, is equal to to zero. So we've multiplied the right hand side by these terms as well but because of zero we just have zero there. So now what we're going to do is expand this and 
when we have x minus 2 squared times x plus 3 squared, that's going to cancel with this, which is minus x minus 2 squared times x plus 3 squared. So a lot of the terms are going to cancel immediately. So we're going to get x minus 2 squared times x plus 3 squared. You don't even need to write this if it's obvious to you. You could just cancel it immediately. Plus x plus 3 squared minus x minus 2 squared times x plus 3 squared minus, and then it's x minus 2 squared times 1, and that's equal to 0. So as we've noticed, this term and this term both cancel. And now we've got a difference of two terms, and the leading term, if I expand this in powers of x, is going to be x squared here and x squared here. So they're going to cancel, and we're only going to have linear terms surviving. So what we're going to get is x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus, open brackets for safety, x squared minus 4x plus 4, close brackets, is equal to 0. And the reason I said safety is that if I don't put brackets around it here and here, then when I expand that, I have to remember to multiply each term by a minus sign, and that's a possible source of an error. So the x squared and the x squared will cancel, and we're going to then get a 6x minus minus, so that's plus 4x, and 6x plus 4x is 10x, and then we have plus 9 minus 4, so that's plus 5, is equal to naught. So therefore, we have that x is equal to minus 5 over 10, which is minus 1 half. And that is our answer. So this exercise was a little bit different because to solve it we used completing the square. And what we're really trying to do by doing this is just to group the terms nicely together such that cancellations like this and this are very simple and it's not that there are lots and lots of terms. If we were to expand this there would be powers of x to the fourth, x cubed, etc. which would all cancel, but you're much more likely to make a mistake. So that's the end of this podcast and I hope that you have enjoyed practicing your algebra.